Welcome to Good Food and Tours, Jamaica. Let's make some coconut carrot cake with some yogurt icing. I know, right? It's going to be completely delicious and it's going to feel healthy too. <laughs> Alright, so we're starting out with our carrots. I'm using around, what, six carrots? Yeah. I'm using all the carrots I have in my house and I wish I had more that I could use more because I love my carrot cakes with a lot of carrots. Okay, so I'm scraping off the skin of my carrot and I cut off the ends. I scrape off the ends as well. And then I'm using the grater. I'm not using the big side of the grater. I'm using the medium size. I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and grater all of my carrots. I don't grater to the end because I do not want to like grater my finger. No. And I'm using a coconut, a fresh coconut. Yes, real coconut here. I crack my coconut and then guess what happened? I was so anxious to get this coconut open and then guess what? It spoiled. It spoiled. And I was so sad. I was like, oh my no. I was like, oh my. Oh my gosh. What am I gonna do now? Hmm? I said, let me try it to see how bad it is. Let me try it. Relax. It while It can't pass. No, it's not bad. But I don't have any time to waste. So let me just put this aside and get to weighing out or measuring out the dry ingredients. The baby woke up and I have to push on <laughs> while the baby is in my hand. <laughs> I weigh out the white flour, which is counter flour, all purpose flour. Add some ginger powder and cinnamon powder. Then I move on to my leavening ingredients some baking powder and now some baking soda just a little baking soda then I put all of that through a sieve and just sieve it so I actually asked my husband to get me another coconut since he was in town and while he's getting me that coconut I'll just work on the dry ingredients I added in some whole wheat flour So I'm going to grater in some nutmeg because cinnamon and ginger alone cannot work. Now I'm turning to my wet ingredients. I'm using brown sugar because hey, that is the only sugar I use when baking. <laughs> Next, I'm adding in some chiffon margarine. You can use butter if you want. This is the first time I'm using chiffon margarine when baking my carrot cake. Usually I only use oil most of the time. I want to see how the chiffon taste complements this carrot cake. Now I move on to adding in my eggs one at a time, you know. And you can do this by hand as well using a whisk. You know, usually when I'm at home, I just use a whisk. But since I am filming, let me just whip out my hand mixer. Because it looks more professional, right? <laughs> so I'm done whipping up all my eggs. My little daughter helping me. <laughs> Wow, and she tea for so much, you know, when I wasn't looking. I am going to add in some oil now. I just slowly drizzle in my vegetable oil. And I kind of spend a lot of time whisking this together. Now, while I'm waiting on my coconut, I'm going to just grease and flour my baking tins i'm using two eight inch baking tins and i just grease up the base and the sides and i'm going to only add flour to the base i do not want the flour on the sides because this is like a naked cake so i do not want any flour to be seen on the sides of my cake 
you know and i try to ensure that no flower gets on the sides Woohoo! i did it <laughs> and i just whistle swiggle wiggle wiggle it on the other baking tin and yay all right so my husband finally got home with the coconut so oh gosh please let this one be good because if this one spoiled too you know i don't know what i'm going to do that's my husband eating his dinner <laughs> So, all right, it smell all right. You know, smells so fresh, but it smell better than the other one. Let me go ahead and t let me go ahead and taste this. Mmm, it can go on. You know, so bad. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Cause I don't know what I would do. I need to crack this up. <laughs> just, just do it. Whoa, it crack. <laughs> And I guess I want my coconut. And I'm just going to grate on my coconut. And I'm going to add one cup of threaded or grated coconut into the grated carrots. Now I am going to husk out the rest of the coconut to make some coconut milk. I put some coconut in the blender. I add a little bit of warm water that I can extract all the coconut flavor. I'm going to run that through a sieve because I really want to measure out how much coconut milk I'll be adding to the recipe to share with you. I'm going to allow this coconut trash to dry, to cool down, not dry. <laughs> and I'm going to grate her in some ginger. And I just want to scrape off all the skin of the ginger. That is why I'm using a spoon to get all the skin off. I'm adding in like three thumbs thumbs of ginger because my love and my carrot cake full of ginger my love and my carrot cake full of ginger and i just grated that in take a little time enjoy making this cake and then this the coconut trash is cooled down and i'm adding it also in because this is a coconut carrot cake so we have different type of coconut size of coconut going in I am then going to mix in all of this coconut and carrot goodness into the wet ingredients. And I'm going to work on some other flavors. I'm adding in like one tablespoon of lemon juice. And then I have this rose almond water that I got from my mother-in-law. I'm going to use that as well. Some vanilla because I, I am a vanilla girl. And I just mix this into my wet ingredients yo hopefully this comes out good and i just add that now to my dry ingredients it's pretty simple no adding it in two parts and i noticed that hey i need i forgot to add my coconut milk but it's not too late <laughs> so i draw for my coconut milk I do not like to over mix but I also do not like to under mix so I'm just going to use my hand mixer and just give that a good mix before pouring out my butter into my baking tins and I measure to get an even amount by just counting the spoons and I bake these for 40 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I was so happy yes hard work done and my kids of course you know licked out the bowl and licked off the spatula but guess what no god have mercy may not over bake the cake them they should have been baked for like 30 minutes instead of 40 minutes them come out well look baked <laughs> And I decided that I'm going to roll with the punches. Next time I try out this recipe, and only bake for around 30 minutes and see. I allowed my cakes to cool for around 15 minutes in the baking tin first before popping them out to finish cooling on the baking rock. The cooling rock, not baking rock. The cooling rock. <laughs> And then after them cool, I started to work on my icing. I'm using some Greek yogurt. It is 
so good. It's an affordable and healthier alternative to cream cheese. I'm using some icing sugar and I'm going to use as much to get the sweetness that I desire and also the consistency of the icing that I want. And I am never going back to cream cheese frosting. You know, I can have an affordable and healthier alternative. Trust me, this is worth it. Now, I add in a little bit more icing sugar to get a little thicker consistency, you know. And you also have to ensure that you save your icing sugar, that you not get no rock stone sugar crystals in there. I add a little lemon juice and a little vanilla just to pep up the flavor. And there you have it. Wow. Now my cakes are all cooled down and it's now to icing them up. So I just pour on some of that delicious icing that is still tangy as a cream cheese frosting you know it is amazing and at first i was being a little bit delicate and i was like no this needs some more icing man <laughs> so i just drizzle it on and i was having fun and i decided that i was going to add some coconut not just regular threaded coconut, but some toasted coconut. I toasted my coconut this time. I placed that in the freezer for it to like set up a little bit before I put on the other layer of cake, you know. And now I whip out the other cake on top. Assembling the cakes is like one of my favorite parts when it comes to the cake baking and stuff. Now I just pour on all of the rest, the remaining icing, and I just like just delicately bring it around. And I'm not going to really force it to go down. I'm going to allow this to run down on itself and just look at it. Now it was running a little bit too fast. So I decided to use some of the toasted coconut to create this little barrier to stop from to stop all the icing from running down. And then I realized my cake was kind of like uneven. It was like all of the, the icing was like running down from one side. So I kind of balanced it off with a plastic knife and it kind of helped but it still needed a little bit more lifting so i took some of the toasted coconuts and just put it right where the elevation was needed and it was leveled and then now i just took some of the icing and just drizzle it around the edges and just allow that baby to fall and it looked amazing it came out better than i expected and you know i will allow you to be the judge of that i do not want to toot my own horn who no wait to bring this cake out at my grandma's and daughter's birthday party jolly good fellow cause she's a jolly good fellow She's a jolly good fellow. That's all one can do. You hold it, Sarah. You be in control, yes, yes, Sarah. Welcome to the grandma, Sarah. After one, two, two three. <laughs> it's time to give my honest critique of this cake. It tasted really good. I get the coconut and the ginger. It wasn't shy of the coconut, trust me. And it was delicious. I love the spice level. The only critique was that because it was over baked by 10 minutes, it kind of come out a little bit dry. But it was still good. And it, had a, it was still moist. But it wasn't as moist as how a carrot cake is expected to be so now we have reached the end of another amazing video and i would like to leave you with a bible verse romans 5 verse 8 but god showed how much he loved us by having christ die for us even though we were sinful 
Some other translation says, even though we were sinners, God showed us sincere and unconditional love. You know? And this kind of love is what we need to have in our life. And must say it difficult, you know? Because more well, you know, some people get by your nerve, you know. <laughs> Yo, how do we love murderers, people who kill other people? How do we love people who steal? How do we love evil people? You know? And it's so hard. And then there's an other Bible verse that says, You love those who love you. What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. But it's so hard to do good to those who do evil to you. And that makes you realize, if you're going to love people who love you, is that truly love? Come on, that's just like, yeah, that's a norm. But when you love people who do wicked things to you, I mean... Now that is a true practice of love. And I think what makes it easier to love persons who are difficult or persons who are complete evil is realizing that we too are sometimes evil and realizing that we too are sometimes sinful. So if you're going to not love someone else, or not give other person love because they're sinful. How are you deserving of love then? You know? And I'm not saying that you should see people who are evil and then go and be friends with them because you're showing them love. No, that is something only a foolish person would do. You know, you give love to everyone and use discernment, knowing who you must stay away from. <laughs> so don't bother think, oh, oh my gosh, I'm being a good Christian. I'm going to go into a murder house and no, protect yourself, please don't do that. You know, also we love people, but we just hate the sinful act they have committed. And I think the reason why God calls us to love everybody no matter of their sinner no matter how much they have hurt us is because god realized ultimately the only thing that can stop hate is love it's as if god looked at a situation and say yo the only thing going to stop this you know is love love conquers all and some person say love is weak or love make you weak. They don't know the true love. That no, oh, love is strong. You know, it's so easy to hate those who hate you. But to love those who hate you, my gosh, that requires strength. And it isn't say that you're going to allow people to, to walk over you because you show them love. No, you see people who know true love. My gosh, you cannot take them for a fool. They're going to tell you the truth in love. <laughs> I mean, and then after they tell you what the truth is and they put you in a place, you and them is best friend again and they keep you on track in love. Yo, I mean, <laughs> but we have reached the end. One love. See you next time and please remember to like the video because the more YouTube sends, because the more you like it, YouTube will send it out. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Bye. See you next time.